Let's bring in our CNN White House correspondent, Caitlin Collins. Caitlin, we have uh, had days of head spinning comments from the president about Russia and Putin. What's the latest you're hearing over there? Well, Wolf, we're continuing to see this divide between the president and his own administration officials continue to deepen over Russian meddling in the election. The president has been inconsistent at best on his statements about this, now telling CBS that he would hold Vladimir Putin responsible for this, even though he declined to do so when they were standing right next to each other during that press conference in Helsinki. Meanwhile, the president's handpicked FBI director, Christopher Wray, saying there is no doubt in his mind that Russia meddled in the election and will try to do so again as well as the DHS chief Kirsten Nelson saying that she also concludes uh, and agrees with the intelligence community's assessment that Russia did meddle in the election. Now, she expressed some hesitancy over their conclusion that they meddled the election to help President Trump. That is what they have concluded. Uh, but she did say that she does believe Russia will continue to target the United States. Well, that comes after that fallout of the president's remark yesterday during the cabinet room meeting when he said that he uh, did not believe Russia was still targeting the U.S. He said no in response to that question from a reporter twice. And then the White House later had to come out and clear up and say that the president was saying no to no more questions, even though he continued to answer questions after he said no, he does not believe Russia is continuing to target the U.S., something that is in complete disagreement with the U.S. intelligence community. So well, right now, the president still maintaining that he is going to be tough on Vladimir Putin, but also adding he doesn't know what all the fuss is about. You know, it's interesting because the White House also says that President Trump is considering a truly shocking proposal for Russia to interrogate Americans, including a former U.S. ambassador uh, in Moscow, a proposal put forward by Vladimir Putin. What's the reaction within the administration to that idea? Wolf, it is an idea that the State Department is calling absurd, but that the president himself said he believed was an incredible offer from Vladimir Putin. The Russian president supposedly proposed to President Trump letting special counsel Robert Mueller question those 12 Russian military intelligence officers who were indicted for uh, interfering in the election in exchange for Russians being able to question some American officials who they say have interfered in their affairs. Now, that is simply something that is unheard of, Wolf. But yesterday, when the White House was asked about the idea of this actually happening, Sarah Sanders didn't rule it out and instead said the president is going to decide discuss it with his team and then they would get back to us. That is an astonishing answer, Wolf, and it just simply is something that is not likely to happen. But the idea that the White House can't just rule it out as the State Department has done, of course, the administration's State Department is just simply another confusing event regarding Russia here at the White House, Wolf. Yeah, it's truly shocking that they would even consider uh, recommending that Mike McFall, the uh, former U.S. ambassador to, uh, to Russia, be allowed to be questioned by the Russians. Uh, truly shocking indeed. Caitlin, thank you very much. We have lots to discuss. Joining us right now, the staff writer for The New Yorker, Adam Entis, uh, a former member of President George W. Bush's National Security Council, Michael Allen, former assistant attorney, U.S. assistant attorney, uh, Kim uh, Whaley, and our chief political correspondent, Dana Bass. Uh, Dana, uh, let's quickly talk about this. The White House is considering allowing uh, Mike McFaul, the former U.S. ambassador to Russia, he served for five years in the government, to be questioned by Putin's regime. Uh, what's that all about? I don't think it's the White House considering it. I don't think it's the administration considering it. I think it's the president of the United States not saying no. And his press secretary, because of that, not being able to say no because she speaks for him and he's watching the press, press uh, briefing. And about mm, 45 minutes, a little under, the United States Senate is going to uh, pass a resolution that has been proposed by the Democratic leader saying under no circumstances would or should or could a U.S. ambassador or a U.S. Uh, member of the diplomatic corps be allowed to be interrogated by Vladimir Putin or anybody in Russia. The fact that the Republican leadership is allowing, as toothless as it is, uh, a resolution for the Congress and for the Senate to be on record saying this tells you all you need to know. You're a former assistant U.S. attorney. Have you ever seen uh, the White House considering allowing a former a retired diplomat to be questioned by a hostile government?
No, it's absolutely astonishing. I mean, it's beyond comprehension. And the question really now has to do with how is the system going to hold people accountable for this kind of uh, compromised position with respect to the interests of the United States? And the fact that Congress is stepping up publicly um, in connection with some of the things the president's doing, what the statements he made in Helsinki, in addition to this resolution, frankly, gives me some hope um, that, that our system is actually going to function to hold uh, people accountable in a, in a situation where clearly, clearly, there's no question this president is not putting the interests of the United States and American citizens first. And hopefully um, it won't break under the weight of this kind of uh, problems at the upper echelons of government. My own suspicion, Michael Allen, is that uh, the president doesn't like the former ambassador because he appears a lot on TV and he makes comments critical of the current president, then that may be one of the reasons he's, he's open to this possibility. I think so. I think Putin put this to him in part because it seemed to have some political attractiveness to it. Hey, you know what? Obama's people made a mistake. Don't you want to let us question the Obama people? But I think it couldn't send a worse signal to the U.S. government. It would be akin to us sending a warfighter, a U.S. troop, over to a rogue regime for a show trial. It has to be knocked down by the White House today. I'm so glad the Senate is going to knock this down probably 99 to 0 here in a few minutes. And so people wonder when the other branches of government are going to start to perk up. I think you're beginning to see it today. Adam, you want to weigh in on this? Yeah, I, I think also what, what Putin was doing in some ways was sort of taking advantage of Trump really just not having the experience to know that this is a non-starter. I mean, there's such deep distrust between our intelligence and law enforcement agencies uh, and their agencies. Even though we cooperate in some ways, there is a fundamental distrust. And we're not going to be allowing them to question uh, one of our former ambassadors. It's just it's something that would never be accepted. But frankly, maybe Trump, you know, because he talks about getting along with Russia, just didn't really understand how deep that distrust is. You say is. he took advantage. Uh, he, he's playing the president. And that is really one of the many reasons, but one of the main reasons why the president's fellow Republicans are so upset about that performance in Helsinki, never mind what we absolutely know nothing about with regard to the two-hour private meeting, is because they are concerned because of the naivete, the inexperience, or, or the desire that the president has made very clear to be so solicitous to uh, this, this dictator in Russia that he gets played.